One of the major ways that buildings are depicted is in perspective. The, the basic distinguishing feature of perspective is that these are drawings, or in fact a way of seeing the world, in which parallel lines converge at infinity, way off in the distance. The first thing for us to think about is that perspective is actually a construct. It's part of the Western artistic tradition. It starts in the late 14th century and is really developed in the 15th century, um, especially in Florence. Uh, by Filippo Brunelleschi. Different uh, historical periods and different cultural traditions will depict space differently. So for instance, in the Japanese tradition, you often see objects arranged in space. So they'll often be gold leaf or a colored plane that separates the objects. So it's acknowledging that the objects are distinct, they're not touching, that there's a space between them. But it's a different way of depicting that space than with perspective. As I mentioned, the most significant thing with perspective is that parallel lines, lines that you would normally see, parallel to each other, obviously, are actually converging at a very, very distant point. And that means that things that are closer to you will seem larger, and things that are farther away will seem much smaller, even if these two objects are actually the same size. The place where these lines converge, which we can think of as being infinity, far, far, far away, is actually called a vanishing point, and it's placed on what we call the, what we call the horizon. There are three major kind of perspective drawings that we're going to look at. And what differentiates these three kinds, and we call them one point, two point, and three point, are the number of vanishing points that are used on the drawing. In the simplest form, we'll use one vanishing point. So if we look at this drawing, let's imagine, first of all, that a line is drawn, and that's the horizon. On the far, far, far distance, so at, at infinity, at this horizon, we place a point, and that's the vanishing point. Now let's imagine that we're, that we're constructing a room so an object that's in the space that's between us, the viewer, and the horizon, and the vanishing point. We start, and now we, we, we start, we draw a window, we draw a frame, and now we're going to put in a floor, walls, and a ceiling. And since these surfaces are, and the lines that define them are parallel to each other, we now see how these lines are actually converging at the vanishing point. So we can populate the space with tables and with furniture, and we see our objects that are the same size, that we know are the same size, actually look different. The chair that's in the foreground is much larger than the chair that's farther back in the background. Why? Because again, they're, they're lines that are parallel are converging at infinity. Perhaps the most important thing that we notice with a one-point perspective is that as, as a viewing subject, the person who's looking at the drawing, we notice how our viewpoint is looking right at the vanishing point. So where we're looking is where all these lines are converging. The second kind of perspective drawing is a two-point perspective. It's very similar to a one-point, except now we have two vanishing points. So let's look at this in the same way. First we draw a horizon line, and now we're going to place two vanishing points. One on the left, and one here on your right. Now let's imagine an object that's placed in the space that's between the horizon and you, the viewer. So let's take here, we have a simple farmhouse that, that we're going to draw. We notice how the farmhouse has two sides that are perpendicular to each other. The parallel lines on one of these sides are converging at the left vanishing point, while the parallel lines on the other side are converging here at the right vanishing point. Once again, the parts of the building that are closest to us are appearing larger, whereas the parts that are farther away appear smaller. The final sort of perspective we can make is a three-point. This is very similar to the two-point, except we've now added a third point where the vertical lines are going to converge. This is especially useful when you think about how tall buildings appear, or at least how we generally depict tall buildings, since the top is far away and appears smaller. So we've got the same drawing, except let's now imagine we're using a larger building, for instance a tower, and we notice how, just as one side converges to the right, the other side converges to the left, now the vertical lines are converging to a vanishing point far above us.